All right, folks, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's um, webcast titled Integrated, uh, Integrating Endeavor to Ansible. Before I hand you off to Vaughn, Jan, and Marquetta, just a few things I need to cover. Um, first, if you have questions during the session, and we always hope that you do, please use the questions box along the right-hand side of your screen, right under the GoToWebinar control panel to ask them. We'll get through as many of those as we can during our time together today. If for some reason we can't get to all of your questions, um, you know, if we run out of time or something requires a little bit of research, uh, I'll make sure that the team gets everything they need to follow up with you later this week. We are recording today's session. That's why your lines are all muted. Uh, the replay will be available probably sometime tomorrow morning out in the Endeavor community. So if you have someone you want to share it with, uh, please feel free to point them there. And the last thing for me is we want to make sure these um, webcasts are, are valuable. So with that in mind, I pulled together a quick survey that will pop up at the end of the webcast. If you could stick around for an extra 30 seconds or so and just give us some quick feedback, I know everyone involved would appreciate it. That's it for me. So now I'm going to hand you off to Vaughn Marshall. Take it away, Vaughn. Thanks, Len, and welcome, everyone. So uh, today's webcast uh, is actually going to be mostly run by our subject matter experts, Jan and Marquetta. I just wanted to kind of uh, say a few words of welcome and talk a little bit about you know, what Ansible is and why it matters in the world of Endeavor. Um, so if anybody's been uh, following kind of the release automation space uh, for mainframe, um, the topic of using Ansible to kind of drive that has come up a, a fair bit. Um, there are a number of different um, uh, release automation solutions on the market, but I think uh, like everything else uh, these days, Ansible being open source has built a very large community of practitioners. And of course, um, given that, uh, you know, there's there uh, a lot of companies are looking at standardizing around Ansible for deployments and infrastructure automation, it makes sense that they would want to apply that to their mainframe um, uh, software uh, practices. And of course, Endeavor, um, uh, can easily integrate into many different platforms, including Ansible via Zoe. So uh, what, what we're going to talk about today is exactly how that works, a little bit about how Ansible works. And, um, you know, I would uh, encourage you to try this out if you've got Ansible at your shop. So with that all said, I'll turn it over to Jan and uh, Marquetta to kind of walk through what this looks like. Okay. Uh, thank you, Juan. Uh, thank you, Len. Uh, hi, all. Uh... To get together with Marketa today, we will uh, show you, uh, as one said, uh, something uh, about uh, or tell you something about Ansible, and then show you a very small example how Ansible can be used together with Endeavor to uh, do the work. Okay, so uh, this is basically the same uh, we, we discussed. Is here just for someone who would like to uh, just read. What's Ansible? Uh, Ansible is uh, is a product, open source product, that enables infrastructure as a code. Uh, infrastructure as a code is a very popular term uh, across uh, across um, cloud and and distributed platforms, and the reason is simple. Uh, the tool uh, itself is very easy to learn. Uh, and basically, uh, you don't need to have a very deep technical knowledge to be able to build. Uh, probably at the beginning, easy, uh, easy automation tasks, and then evolve them into something much more complex and, and uh, bigger and uh, also much more useful. Uh, what is happening in Ansible space uh, in last two, two, two years, basically, is that uh, uh, IBM uh, introduced their own Ansible collection uh, Ansible collections, uh, or Ansible collection is, uh, is a set of uh, Ansible modules. And module is uh, basically the prescription how Ansible should communicate uh, with the target platform. Uh, so uh, IBM developed their own uh, collection that is using uh, various interfaces on the mainframe, basically, or mainly it's SSH, but for their other products could be REST API and, and maybe others and uh, bring the basic uh, ZOS functionality into the ZOS. So, so far, or so far, so uh, two years ago, you were able to uh, to interact from uh, from Ansible with uh, Linux servers, Windows machines, uh, network infrastructure from, I don't know, Cis Cisco, uh, HP, Aruba networks, uh, whatever is uh, available on the, on the market, probably has some kind of integration or interface 
for Ansible. And if it's not supported by, by the vendor itself, uh, I'm sure that community uh, around the Ansible uh, has a solution for that, uh, for that product. Uh, recently, uh, basically uh, this summer, Broadcom uh, published Ansible collections for a set of uh, our products. Uh, as you will see later, uh, all of them are uh, enabled by, uh, or, or they have they have Zoe CLI plugins. And uh, this is what uh, Vaughn mentioned that we are utilizing uh, behind the scene, the Zoe CLI. So uh, why you should take care about uh, Ansible? Uh, as I said, you don't need to have a deep mainframe uh, um, or automation knowledge. Uh, as you will see, uh, creating uh, Ansible playbooks, uh, roles and, and uh, complex scenarios is really like uh, writing some, uh, let's say crippled uh, standard uh, standard mails, right? Uh, it's something like you would put uh, your tasks in a, in a sentences, uh, eliminate some uh, some empty words for for computers. And that's it. Uh, however, uh, traditional mainframe automation tools uh, remain uh, relevant. What does it mean? Uh, if you would adopt Ansible, it doesn't mean that you don't you need to or you should uh, remove your uh, mainframe automation tools that are running on the platform. Uh, I think it's exactly opposite. Uh, you can then build more complex scenarios and orchestrate much more complex uh, automation automation tasks using using what you have already uh, on the mainframe and combine it uh, together. Uh, one example could be that uh, you would like to deploy a new uh, new business application module to the production environment and in the same time you need to up, uh, modify uh, firewall uh, firewall uh, rules or some proxy configuration uh, in the network, whatever would make sense for, for such module. So uh, currently you would need to probably open, uh, I don't know how many tickets uh, on your IT and, and uh, other, other departments. Uh, here you can build one uh, playbook that will be reviewed by these, uh, these relevant people and then run the automation uh, by one click or uh, schedule it uh, for midnight during the weekend and just wait uh, for successful build no successful uh, execution this is what i have here as a concatenate task across a heterogeneous environment uh, benefits of this is that, uh, or benefits of this are that uh, you can uh, before you you run everything uh, uh, on the, on the production environment, you can uh, do the dry runs. You can uh, you can adopt technologies or, or technologies principles that are coming from term uh, called GitOps, which is that uh, your uh, system administrators, uh, sub uh, SREs, and other uh, other people can adopt best practices that are coming from uh, GitHub uh, development best practices. So. Uh, namely versioning uh, so uh, every uh, every automation change is is version so if you would need to go back you can uh, easily do uh, if you would uh, if you would need what exactly was executed when you can you can do the code reviews it means that uh, more eyes are watching the same code and can potentially catch some some potential issues uh, you can adopt uh, instant testing. I understand that it's uh, quite hard to do uh, instant testing for very complex scenarios, but uh, you can adopt at least uh, this at least partially. Uh, as the code is uh, is living in in usually in GitHub, but uh, you can connect more. Uh, more uh, code uh, versioning systems. Uh, you can adopt authentication and authorization principles for that. So uh, only people that are allowed to change the automation uh, automation tasks can modify it. Another uh, another people can just do the reviews uh, and so on and so on. Of course, backupping these uh, type of codes it's uh, very very easy. So you can easily backup and back out uh, all the automation that uh, you are working on. What are the typical use cases? Uh, I know that we are talking uh, now on uh, uh, Endeavor uh, community call. However, uh, I would like to hear uh, show some uh, or talk uh, a little bit about uh, more examples that you can uh, you can adopt or implement uh, using Ansible. 
So except the uh, orchestration that I already mentioned, you can also use Ansible for, uh, I would say, uh, annoying but important things like uh, certificate renewals, uh, password resets, uh, user management on, on mainframe. And especially if you are running a heterogeneous environment and your users, uh, for some reason, are not synced through uh, some kind of uh, Active Directory or ADAP, uh, you can easily done this uh, using uh, Ansible playbooks. You can schedule uh, you, uh, with proper tools. You can schedule schedule jobs. Uh, you can check uh, data set uh, encryption uh, whether sensitive data are encrypted there properly. Uh, you can use Ansible automation for uh, test environment provision. You can also uh, install and deployment application uh, across multiple platforms. Again, this very uh, similar use case that I mentioned before. Uh, let's imagine that you need to modify not just the code on the mainframe or update the uh, libraries on the mainframe, but also deploy a new proxy uh, module on Linux environment together with your application. So you can sync all these things together and make them happen in the same time, which uh, should prevent uh, either delays, uh, mistakes during uh, during the task handovers, etc. And uh, of course, uh, not on the on the. I have it as a as a uh, as a last bullet point, but uh, it probably should be in the first place. Uh, and and ever uh, management. Uh, so Ansible can cover much more use cases than uh, we would uh, we will discuss today. And it's probably just about your imagination, what tasks or what use cases uh, you can uh, you can automate. Uh, there are uh, in Ansible there are modules and collections for uh, for controlling uh, Philips Hue bulbs through the REST API uh, on on a bridge. So. Uh, I understand that it's a very silly, silly use case, but it's there and it's possible. Nobody would do that, but uh, I'm using this as an example how Ansible is universal and can be leveraged to achieve uh, very different, uh, different things. Okay, uh, Ansible collections. I mentioned that uh, Ansible collections is uh, or a co Ansible collection is set of uh, modules, and module is. Uh, uh, something what can be, can be considered as a as a prescription how user is interacting uh, or how uh, Ansible is interacting uh, for, on one side with the target platform and on the other side to the uh, to the user. Uh, so uh, important and I think uh, the uh, the big or the biggest uh, the biggest change uh, in Ansible and ZOS ecosystem happened two years ago. I already mentioned that uh, when IBM uh, uh, released their uh, ZOS core collection. So in in this core core collection, uh, there are a lot of a uh, lot of possibilities or a lot of uh, a uh, lot of commands and, and modules, uh, maybe also the roles that you you can leverage to cover things that uh, for, uh, so far you needed to go uh, you need to go to the mainframe uh, or in best case uh, using Zoe CLI. They uh, they built their own uh, collection uh, that enables. Uh, uh, data set manipulation, uh, working with data like uh, download and upload, uh, searching through the data sets and USS files, uh, working with ZOS jobs. So you can uh, submit a job from, from Ansible and it's very, very easy to do that. Uh, and of course, running and executing uh, mainframe uh, tools or, or commands as you are used to do the, from the uh, ISPF panel or uh, USS, uh, you can now do it from uh, Ansible in a way that if you are familiar with Ansible, uh, I would bet that in our, uh, you, can, uh, you can cover all these topics uh, uh, immediately. There are prerequisites on, the, on this uh, core collection. Uh, you need to have uh, 2.3 version of ZOS and of course open SSH because uh, SSH is basically the standard for, for Ansible uh, or standard communication channel uh, to the target platforms. Uh, the reason is that uh, Ansible was initially developed for uh, un uh, Linux uh, nodes so, and on Linux uh, SSH is uh, standard for uh, let's say remote access. So that's the reason why uh, also here is the is the prerequisite. Uh, but you need to uh, also install uh, Python SDK and Z Open Automation Utilities. Uh, 
I think uh, it from this from this list it, it looks like uh, there are a lot of prerequisites. Uh, however, install and enable all of them isn't too difficult, and uh, I think uh, a lot of you already have some of them uh, available on your environment. Uh, IBM is working on much more collections, so uh, they are uh, they are building and uh, offering to the community, uh, basically the mainstream community, of course, uh, collections for their products. So they have a collection for Kicks, IMS. Uh, they have collection for ZUSMF. So uh, technically, you can do the same things uh, using the ZUS, ZUSMF co uh, collection or uh, the ZUS Core collection. Uh, if you would like, uh, if you would like to run a ZUSMF workflow, then you need to use this uh, ZUSMF uh, collection. Uh, you can also manage uh, platform resources uh, on on Z using the ZHMC uh, collection uh, or uh, SysAuto and Package Manager. Uh, I will show you where you can find more details and, uh, and uh, I'm sure that in the future uh, this list uh, will grow. Uh, the same is applicable for uh, broad command Ansible collections. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this summer we released uh, Ansible collections for uh, these, uh, uh, these products. Yeah. And these three, CISU, DBM, and IDMS, uh, are queued uh, for the upcoming uh, upcoming releases. Uh, we have only one uh, one prerequisite, which is the REST API for uh, each particular product. And the reason is, as we already mentioned, that uh, we are on the behind the scene. We are using uh, Zoe CLI. It means that uh, if you have uh, your products already available to talk uh, to client side uh, using Zoe CLI, then uh, our collections will work uh, smoothly uh, without any any changes. So, uh, how it works? Uh, there is a there is a Broadcom Ansible collection uh, called uh, ZOS uh, sorry Zoe Core uh, Zoe Core. This is um, imagined by this uh, by this cogwheel. And uh, what this core collection does, it uh, it tr translate uh, Zoe C or Ansible uh, Ansible modules calls uh, into the Zoe CLI commands that are then sent through the REST API. To the mainframe. So, if you have in your Ansible playbook uh, any any mention that uh, is uh, recognized by Ansible as Broadcom uh, Broadcom products and Broadcom uh, product uh, commands or, or modules, then uh, these things uh, or these commands are translated uh, from uh, Ansible uh, Ansible playbooks into the Zoe CLI calls. And these calls are executed on the Ansible control node, which is uh, which is usually a Linux environment. And uh, through the standard test API calls are uh, executed uh, on the, on the mainframe, uh, of course, for the each particular product. Uh, IBM's US core collection uh, here uh, do the work uh, differently, as I mentioned. They are using mainly the SSH connection. So uh, everything what you need to do is to is to write your playbook. Store it uh, in a in a Git or any any software versioning system or source code versioning system, and then uh, Ansible uh, takes care about how uh, each command or uh, request uh, should be executed or uh, translated and executed. For Broadcom uh, collections, it is using Zoe CLI through REST API. For uh, IBM's US Core collection, it is translated to the SSH calls that are sent through the SSH uh, connection to to mainframe. Here's a list of resources just uh, uh, for any for someone who would like to uh, uh, click on the on the links. Uh, I will show you uh, I think all of them uh, in the next minutes. So uh, before we jump onto demo, I just want to share uh, how it looks like in Ansible Galaxy. So here I have a uh, Ansible. I hope you see my screen. Yes, uh, Ansible Galaxy, uh, uh, and uh, we are now in IBM space. So we can see I already pre-filtered that IBM currently have 13 collections 
that are attacked uh, as a ZOS. Uh, what we discussed was the IBM ZOS core, which is here. And by the way, uh, you can see that uh, they are uh, they are tending to have uh, uh, 100,000 of downloads of, of this core collection. So I think it's very uh, good sign how popular uh, Ansible is uh, or is or for uh, main famers. Let's check what's there. As I mentioned, you can do uh, you can do uh, it's not here. It's it's here. Uh, you can do a lot of lot of things, uh, and uh, we can check uh, some of them. So, for example, a copy of data sets. You you have here a description what the uh, command or module, uh, better say, uh, does. What are the parameters? Uh, I think there are also the examples. Yes. So, uh, for example, these four lines uh, copy uh, uh, local file um, on this location to this uh, target data set. So, for that, you need to write these four uh, these four lines. Of course, uh, the environment and the Ansible uh, control node uh, needs to be already uh, configured. Uh, I mean, the inventory and some variables need to be uh, defined there before. But uh, basically, these four lines can do something what uh, uh, sometimes could be very hard to automate if you are somehow limited in, for example, FTP usage or something like that. So everything uh, like, like this is covered by uh, four lines. There are more examples uh, uh, that uh, also can do the conversion uh, of uh, encoding uh you can also preserve uh, per, uh, permissions etc etc i think it's uh, not needed to go into the uh, into details uh if you would like to check it uh, as i said please go to the ansible galaxy uh search ibm and then you have a, you have a possibility to check everything what ibm did uh, in matter of enabling zos on uh or in ansible Back to uh, back to our uh, objective here for today. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, currently seven products available, and the ZOS uh, ZOS Core uh, collection that uh, that uh, does the work. We are talking about Endeavor, so let's select as an example Endeavor. Uh, you can see that uh, we are following the same standards as uh, IBM does, just to be. Uh, just to allow our customers and uh, Ansible users to uh, feel the same uh, the same experience as uh, they might have from uh, IBM uh, IBM documentation and uh, ZS Core collection. Let's check uh, Endeavor. And again, uh, same content as uh, IBM has we have here. So let's select. Uh, I don't know whatever list uh, list elements, and uh, as we have the same structure here, I will go directly to the examples. And here we have an example how you can list elements uh, in uh, in Endeavor. So if you are familiar with the Zoe CLI for uh, for Endeavor, you might notice that uh, the structure and the commands are uh, very similar, maybe uh, same. And that's on purpose because we are uh, we are trying to be as much as possible consistent with already existing uh, integrations and implementations. So uh, if you if you know uh, the structure of uh, uh, Endeavor command list elements, these uh, uh, these variables or parameters and their variables are uh, basically the same. Okay, uh, Len, any questions so far, please? No questions so far. Okay, thank you. So let's let's move to the uh, to the practical uh, part of our demo. Oh, sorry. Okay. So uh, I didn't mention this yet. Uh, this is UI uh, UI uh, for Ansible called AWX. If if you would like to get this uh, underpaid support, I think it's called like uh, Ansible Automation Hub, uh, formerly uh, Ansible Tower, and this is uh, available uh, for for paid uh, customers. Uh, 
so we are uh, now heavily uh, focused on open source so we are using uh, open source version it's uh, it's very uh, very same uh, so uh, if you are familiar with the tower i think you see that the same here what, uh, what how it looks like here uh, more details will be shared by Marketa uh, in next next minutes. I just want to say a few things. Uh, I mentioned that you need to have your environment ready for uh, for execution of such uh, playbooks. It means that you need to define, of course, users, uh, maybe organizations, because uh, Ansible can uh, can build lot very complex uh, very complex. Uh, structures of users and how they are working in the teams and organization etc and the reason is that uh, different uh, groups or users can have different privileges so uh, one group of users can define all these uh, all these inventories uh, uh, integration with uh, with uh, source code management repositories etc etc another group can just modify the tasks that are executed here in the ansible and another group uh, can just just execute what uh, all these previous groups uh, already prepared i think that's a big benefit uh, of this solution because then you can easily uh, easily integrate uh, this into your company processes where I, I understand that you have a lot of approvals and, and different stages uh, or different uh, shifts between stages where uh, human interaction is uh, needed uh, for various reasons so this can be covered by uh, by this uh, ansible uh, user structure or it's a structure as it's called here now i'm i'm showing the repositories so we have a lot of uh, repository a lot of inventories here inventory is basically a description of environment where your uh, uh, where your ansible uh, tasks or, or playbooks are executed so as you can see uh, there are variables that are describing the environment in our case it's uh, for example tso1 blah 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 and uh, and this is defining uh, the system so when marketa will be showing uh, what is uh, what is running uh, it's done in, in this uh, in this inventory and uh, this inventory is uh, or in this inventory we have one host which is this uh, this system uh you you also need to uh, define a host which is basically again the same uh, as you can see a lot of mess here but uh, what i would like to show you that you can uh, define uh, the hosts in different stages or not different stages in different uh, states and uh, you can easily switch whether this uh, particular host will be part of the automation or not. And of course, you need to define uh, templates what are describing uh, what is done. So let's take, for example, this one, uh, execute package. And you, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, things, but for us, uh, important is uh, the playbook called execute uh, YAML. Let's check execute YAML on our uh, GitLab, uh, uh, GitHub, uh, GitLab system. So as you can see here, uh, there is a description of the, of the playbook, which hosts are uh, used, uh, which collections are used, and uh, whether we would like to gather some facts. Uh, it means that Ansible can uh, actively sniff uh, some variables from the target system. So if you have uh, your environment uh, very dynamic, like if you are using ZDNT or something like that, you can easily onboard these systems into the Ansible without uh, big, uh, uh, big manual work on Ansible side. And here uh, we are writing or we are notifying Ansible that we would like to uh, uh, use a role called execute. Uh, roles in Ansible, maybe it's somehow misleading, but in fact, roles are like uh, subroutines or subprograms that can be easily reused in different uh, different playbooks. So uh, I have here the, the role uh, execute, and basically what this does, it's uh, called uh, execute package with this package name and with this instance, and that's it. And now I will ask Marketa to show you uh, this in uh, in a play. Uh, we prepared a very short demo how uh, Endeavor can be 
uh, or the package creation and, and, and moving to the, to the pipeline can be done uh, using Ansible. So I don't know whether Marketo, you can take a screen directly or Len needs to uh, handle yeah, the right. I, yeah, yeah, I need to take care of it. I actually, a question just came in a couple minutes ago. Wanted to, um, we can decide if Marketo will answer it if you'll do it. Uh, the question is, how does the merge element work? So I don't know if you want to show that or if you want me to hand off to Marketa and she can do that. It's up to you. Maybe that's a better question for uh, for Vaughn. Oh, okay. How... Vaughn, you are Vaughn? still on mute. Yes, yes. There he is. Fine. So how does that, sorry, how does the merge, can you show me where you saw that? Um... I didn't see. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. The, 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 the question here. came in about three minutes ago. So, yeah, I'm not sure whether we have. Them. Oh, merge element. Merge. Oh, there we go. Go down. Go down. Uh, I saw that. Sorry. Came by. Uh, it was in your list. So scroll down to the M's after L's. There yeah, we go. Merge element. element from one endeavor location. Oh, scroll back up. <laughs> oh, there we sorry, are. Sorry. sorry, I'm reading the the, the side. Um, Synchronize. Oh, okay. So this is basically um, uh, so the, the interesting question. So basically, understand that what um, uh, what what the team has created has been essentially a um, wrapper for our Zoe CLI plugin for Endeavor. So one of the capabilities in the Zoe CLI plugin for Endeavor is uh, something we call Zoe Endeavor Workspaces. Essentially, it allows a user to create an off-host, um, well, essentially, folder that they synchronize with Endeavor. So there's a few commands in there. One of them, for instance, is initialize that creates, that, that basically says this folder is going to be a, um, an Endeavor workspace. Another one is synchronize, where you effectively um, pointed a system, subsystem environment, and so on, and then and then populate the folder with elements, and you can then also use that to um, to synchronize with other people's work. Um, and of course, when you're synchronizing with other people's work, occasionally you run into conflicts. So this would be a wrapper for the command that does the merge um, with that um, conflicts. And effectively, I believe this essentially just says that you have done the conflict resolution. Um, so, keeping that all in mind, do I think that this would likely happen in uh, in the context of an Ansible, let's say, an Ansible, uh, you know, infrastructure as code or or, or um, you know, a deployment? Probably not. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, for completeness, it, it is uh, referenced in the collection. So, hopefully, that helps. <laughs> it's a bit of a long-winded answer, but it, it needed a fair bit of context. Thanks, Vaughn. Uh, Marquette, I'm going to hand off to you now so you can take control. There you go. Oh, we saw your screen for a second. Oh, there it is. We see your screen, Marquette. Uh, can you see the uh, uh -huh. AWX? Oh, okay. Fine. Yep. Yep. So hello. Uh, I will now show you uh, Endeavor workflow, uh, which is basically a workflow made up from uh, those Endeavor job templates, uh, and they are put in a scenario. I will first launch it and then I'll talk about what's inside. So uh, we came up with this scenario that basically uh, creates package from listed elements and uh, then it casts package uh, and also uh, then based on the uh, Ansible approval status, then it runs uh, approve package or deny package. I will now show you the output from the first Ansible job. Uh, it's basically just listing elements, so you can see what I will be 
uh, working with. There are uh, four elements that I have. Uh, they are in a deaf environment and in the first stage. Uh, next, we are creating the package. Here, as you can see, uh, output from this Ansible job is basically here. It creates the package, just empty package. You can see that uh, it, it doesn't uh, print out anything useful, but you can see in the JSON that the return code is zero, so it was successful. Then it lists the elements. Again, we have this uh, this uh, table, and it takes this table and creates basically uh, an SCL based on our shell script. And you can see the SCL here. Uh, the apostrophes are uh, are just normal apostrophes. Uh, in the pack in the SCL, it doesn't show this. It's just uh, that Ansible couldn't process it properly, but in the SCL it's fine. Then uh, we are updating the package uh, with the SCL file, and again uh, the uh, return code is zero, so it was successful. And lastly, we are just cleaning after uh, ourselves, deleting the SCL file from the machine, our machine, local machine. And here I prepared some list package so we can check that the package is really there. And you can see uh, the package is there in uh, and with status in edit. Next Ansible job is casting the package. And you can again see that the return code was zero. So the package was successfully casted. Now we have uh, approval that can be uh, assigned to some other person that would check everything if everything is fine. Uh, you'll go here and uh, uh, then now we will just approve it because we want to show you how to execute the package and uh, sorry basically then based on the uh, it, whether we uh, whether the it was the package was approved or not it goes uh, it just picks these routes this is uh, deny of the package so then it runs uh, the deny package action and uh, we are putting back uh, the, the package back to in edit. There is the reset package action, but uh, we went with the approve path. So here uh, we run just uh, approve package action. It was successful. Next is the execution and based on the execution whether it succeeds or it failed it goes it choose a path here there is uh, the happy path that the package was successfully executed it just lists the elements so we can see that they were moved because uh, we put into our package the SCL that is for moving the elements and if 
the execution would fail, uh, then the package would be again resetted. So uh, the execution was successful. So I can show you uh, that uh, how uh, my elements look like now. So you can see there are all four elements and they were moved to stage number two. And I can also show you how the package looks like. Here I will launch uh, uh, the list packages. Uh, I am now prompted with the name of the package. I will leave uh, the variable as it is, but I could uh, list any package now, but I want to show you the one I was working with. So I launch it and now we will wait a few seconds, hopefully, and it will list all the packages with this name, which is just one, but we could also put there an asterisk so it will show it would show us more packages and now we can see that my package has status executed and that's basically it so i will stop sharing now and yep yep i don't know uh, yeah. Do we, do we have any, any question, Len, on this topic? Yeah, a question just came in. Um, is it possible to variable the, lim the element to avoid having to hard code the element and use, and use it each time and use this, a template? E sorry, the, the, uh, <laughs> English is a second language for this person, I think, and use each time the same template. Maybe, maybe yes. I can field, field that one too. So definitely. Right. Um, um, you know, I guess what Marketa uh, and um, Jan were showing is kind of automating packages and they're using hard coded elements, but it's very possible in our Zoe CLI plugin to do queries, if you will. In fact, there's a query that lets you um, list elements by, say, types, by, say, systems, subsystems with CCIDs, you know, those, those types of queries, and then use that query to actually append the results into the package with a specific action. Uh, and so you can do that in Zoe CLI. You could, so you don't have to hard code um, the elements that you're moving. Um, I don't know, uh, Jan, if you wanted to add on to that, but that's. Uh... I think Marketa is now showing uh, how this can be uh, done as a, as a variable. Of course, uh, as you said, uh, as it is in uh, in Zoe CLI, it's in uh, the collection, and Ansible is very very good in the variable management and and in handling of uh, different variables for the same. Uh, playbook or same, same automation definition. So uh, the main purpose of Ansible in, uh, in the past, and I think it's still very re relevant, was and is to uh, automate tasks that are, uh, that are very similar and differs just in a, in a small set, subset of variables. Marketa is now showing that we have some variables defined here, and they are defined in, uh, in, this, uh, in this form, in YAML form. Uh, in, uh, in the host definition. However, you can uh, you can make this as a, as a prompt option. So whenever you would run uh, this uh, this automation, uh, Ansible would ask you, "Hey, give me uh, the value for this or that variable," and that's it. Uh, I think uh, I, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, Marketa would know whether it's possible to also limit what the variable could be, or whether it's a free field. I'm not sure. But uh, in general, uh, the answer is yes. You can definitely have, uh, uh, let's say, the automation itself locked. However, you can modify the variables per your need or target host or uh, any other uh, any other requests or requirement. And also, I want to add that we don't have the elements uh, hard coded. We are using basically just the, those variables. So we are uh, we are uh, running it with uh, all the elements that 
are of type HFS. This is uh, this is some old uh, variable, but we have HFS, and it showed us all the variable, uh, all the elements there, and we didn't hard code any element. So that's yes, basically yes. it. Yes, basically everything here is a is a some type of variable. And it depends on your uh, Ansible, um, uh, right? It says uh, what uh, you are allowed to do. Uh, if you are some kind of, let's say, admin or some experienced user, you can modify these variables. If not, you can probably just execute uh, the automation as is de de defined, uh, regardless whether there is a uh, prompt or not. Uh, it's really uh, up to uh, up to you how uh, first you define your uh, your uh, user base in uh, in Ansible and how you design your uh, Ansible uh, playbooks or job templates, uh, then roles, etc. It's uh, it's very universal. However, uh, I still believe uh, quite straightforward. And uh, after a few days or weeks in in Ansible, you can build very complex scenarios uh, and uh, automate uh, almost everything you can imagine. Thanks, guys. There's another question that just came in. Uh, anything for package shipping? So yeah, I can I can fill that one as well. And actually, maybe um, um, uh, Len, if it's possible, would it, would I be able to share my screen? Sure, of course. I won't be able to show you it in Ansible. Um, maybe Marketa can talk about this in a sec, but I just want to show. Bear with me a moment. Hopefully you guys can all see this. So we have a, a blog site here called Modern Mainframe. Um, and the use case that, that's being talked about for um, you know, creating packages and automating packages, it's actually detailed uh, in a blog, including, here we go, right over here. So automating uh, Endeavor packages with Zoe CLI. If we go in here, uh, it talks a lot about the Zoe commands that are essentially used to do what Marketa did by Ansible. So shipping packages is down at the bottom. Um, so if you wanna read on on how you might, um, you know, essentially uh, architect a package ship from Ansible, you could use this for inspiration. Um, basically, net net, there is no dedicated ship uh, command, but you can do that via the submit SCL. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. The other thing I would also point out, so the topic that we're talking about today, let's go back to the main modern mainframe uh, link. If you're interested in learning more and reading about it offline, you can come here to uh, medium.com slash modern dash mainframe, and you can type in Ansible. And you'll see over here that uh, Eon, as uh, our, our, our SME on Ansible, has authored a blog talking about uh, much of what we've talked about today. So this is another resource for you um, with live links and so on. And uh, even um, that that one question we had around, hey, what does the merge do? You could also type that in It's uh, if we come in here to uh, synchronize, if I can find, maybe I'll go back actually up to this, see if we're popping up. Actually, you can get to it easily too from coming over here too. So when you go to modern uh, mainframe, you can go to the git slash endeavor. If you go over here to synchronize, Elements. This will discuss that whole thing about um, you know working with Zoe Endeavor workspaces and how you do merges and things like that too. So I just since it was a question on that, I thought I'd point that as well. But all sorts of uh, oh sorry, this one's VS Code. Um, but there's another. Let me find the other one. By the way, for those that aren't aware, there is a VS Code way to sync elements as well that works uh, off of it. And if I can find the other one. Uh, bear with me a moment. Maybe I've gone back to the main page. Uh, so this is the one that is the CLI version. Sorry, that was the wrong one I had pointed at. But over here, editing synchronized elements uh, locally. And this talks about the merge command and how that works. Um, so something, to, some light reading for you all. Uh, all right, so <laughs> um, Len, Len, maybe um, uh, any other questions? If not, I'd turn back over to Jan and Marketa. I don't see that, any other I, I don't see any other questions coming in. Uh, Jan, do you have any other slides you want to show or anything? Uh, sorry, again. Uh, do, do you have any, any more slides you want to go over or something else you want to share? Uh, that's that's all what we what we have. Yes. 
All right, I don't see any other questions coming in, so we can go ahead and wrap up. I, uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Oh, go, go ahead, Jan, if you have something to yeah, say, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, uh, we don't have a slide, but uh, Marketa, uh, Marketa, in fact, can share uh, the ship role in Ansible. Uh, we, we, we prepared that. So. Oh, okay, well, no, oh even better. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, yeah. I did not yeah. realize we had that prepared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here uh, is. Okay, we, we, see your, uh, uh, we see your source code. Is it okay? Yeah, I wanted to show it, but I can see some different. Okay, here I have uh, the ship package role, and uh, it basically uh, how uh, Vaughn said it creates uh, the SCL file uh, with the command, and it submits it, and that's it basically. And you can you can use this role, and uh, all you have to specify is the package name, destination, and also instance, of course, and whether you want to uh, 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 ship it uh, the original package by, uh, binaries or with backout package binaries. And that's it. You can see here that it decides whether when the original is set to true, it will uh, run this task. And when the backup is set to true, it will run these tasks. So yeah, just, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just uh, I want to add a note. Uh, here you can see uh, how uh, the roles, uh, more complex roles could look like. Uh, they are, uh, they are combination of uh, of different uh, ansible uh, ansible commands you can see the shell you can see the when delegate to and all these things and in the same uh, same file we have uh, broadcom endeavor submit jcl and then we have uh, working with again a local system uh, file pass uh, delete etc it means that uh, it's very easy to combine uh, different uh, different collections of different inbuilt uh, ansible uh, ansible features to to build something what uh, you can then easily reuse in your uh, in your playbook and then uh, as marketa said just put there three variables and basically or four variables package name destination uh, whether you would like to uh, use original or backup version and the instance uh, so then in your real playbook uh, these 25 lines will be replaced by i don't know market five four uh, something like that so uh, that's uh, another i think great aspect of ansible that it's very easy to um, to scale and in the same time share code across uh, your uh, automation so uh, you can have a people responsible just for the templates that they are uh, they are tuning and making them nicer and nicer over the time and then you have just the consumers uh, of these uh, roles that are working with this uh, polished uh, ansible uh, roles in their playbooks okay okay all right thanks guys yeah, we do have one more question. We do have a couple minutes left, so we'll, we can try to answer this one as well. Um, one other question, uh, can we include the approval in the Ansible workflow? I think what Marketa showed and uh, maybe wasn't visible enough, uh, she she has a, a approval here in the, in, the, in the Ansible workflow. Yeah, I, I was showing it yeah. was there. Yeah, please show, show it uh, quickly again. Long screen in, now yes here you can see uh, here's the visualizer there is the approved package uh, maybe stage before yeah Th uh, stage before uh, here is well th this yeah. is this is the approval that is done in ansible but then mm -hmm. you have to run also approval in the endeavor and this is it yeah okay uh, i see yeah mm -hmm. yeah I can check it. And so maybe can you show the code of the of the role or playbook? 
uh, playbook I will show you in in the source code here uh, we have approve task and it's just running uh, the approve package module with package name instance and then some notes uh -huh. Yeah, so it's again I think very easy and especially if you know already the Zoe CLI for Endeavor uh, it should be uh, familiar to you. Mm -hmm. Len, any other question? I think that was the last one. Cool. Maybe just so we... uh, before we wrap up I would also uh, throw out there if anybody's looking to try and leverage um, this with uh, Endeavor um, we're more than happy to to work with you on that. So feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we would love to help you um, author a, a playbook or or uh, really understand your use cases. Maybe provide a sample. Uh, we want to kind of make real use cases with real customer scenarios uh, available as samples as much as possible. So uh, I just thought I'd add that in. Thanks, Vaughn. Thanks, everybody, for joining today. We really appreciate it. And I will remind you that our uh, post-event survey is going to pop up here when I hit close. But have a great rest of your week, and we will talk to you next time.